Casting Call is brought to you by Guam Windward Memorial, because in the real world, you don't always get an extra life. Pafre, welcome to Casting Call. This is a new podcast on the Laddy Esports uh, League channel of things that we do. Usually we stream video games, um, esports competition around the Marianas, but um, today and Twice a month, we are doing something a little different. Casting Call is a podcast catered around mental health and the uh, development of streamers in the Marianas. So every episode, we're going to bring a guest on uh, to talk about why they became a, str a streamer and you know what values and characteristics were important to accomplishing their streaming goals and uh, what do they do to keep a, uh, a positive outlook during their, their stream and uh, streaming career, if you will. Um, I'm also joined by my co-host for this series. His name is Arc Pulse. Paul, how are you doing? Hey guys, um, I'm doing good, Ken. It's good to, to be on the podcast. Definitely looking forward to hearing from our guests. Uh, Ken, why don't you uh, introduce our special guest for today? I'm excited. Sure, so for the first inaugural episode of The Casting Call, um, we wanted to invite somebody who is a dedicated streamer, a gamer. He doesn't really compete in many of the the esports things that we have, but he's a, a large supporter of them. Um, and he has one of the most positive streams you will ever find. Uh, Loki, very, very influential and popular streamer on Guam and the future vice president of Laddie Esports League, Mr. Dojo Dean himself. Half a day, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. I appreciate it, man. Well, uh, before I get into things, man, I've been thinking of this all week, but I just wanted to take a second to, you know, just thank you guys, uh, Ken, you know, Paul. It's not, it's not common to find people who will sacrifice time and commit it to opening doors, creating outlets, uh, creating things for other people. So, you know, all the work that you guys have done uh, just for gaming on Guam, everything with uh, Laddie Esports, I just wanted to take a hot minute to thank you guys for that, man. No problem. I really Dean, appreciate it, guys. No problem, for sure. I mean, you know, we're just here to see the, the industry and the hobby grow. Um, you know, Dean, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, where you grew up, you know, what's your hobbies, what you, just a little bit about yourself before we start talking into your streaming career, if you will. Okay, yeah, Um. well, of course, uh, video games is like, <laughs> it's a big thing for me. Uh, I go by the gamer tag of Dojo Dean. Uh, I like long walks. No, I'm just joking, just joking, just playing. But, uh, man, I'm just, you know, I just call myself a regular schmegular, you know. I'm just a regular person. I just enjoy, you know, having a good time. Uh, you know, of course, I got a wife, a beautiful daughter that I'm spending, like, tons of time with right now. So, you know, I'm really hyped off of that. That's a real plus off of everything that's, you know, unfortunately going on. Um, I grew up uh, around Washington State, a little bit of time in Arizona. I made the move back to Guam about 2007 to pursue a few things, and I'm I'm still here pursuing it, man. And you know, just involving myself with everything that I enjoy, everything that I like, uh, work, video games, people, uh, jujitsu, uh, art here, and just trying to keep myself busy, man. You know, just trying to keep myself busy. So I'm just, uh, that's it, man. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> nice. I'm very happy uh, to be here, man. Appreciate it, man. And uh, that sounds really, you, you definitely have this nice, uh, positive, soothing uh, voice of yours, that good, out, <laughs> that good outlook, if I can say so myself. Yeah. Um, you did uh, mention, like, uh, you know, your your name, and I just wanted to know the reasoning a little bit behind your name. The the name Dojo Dean, like, where did that come from, man? Um, Dojo Dean, it's like, I settled on that name because, man, just growing up, 
hanging out with different uh, groups of people through everything that I'm involved with. I've just been called like everything from like dingo to ding ding to, you know, like <laughs> all these, uh, you know, all these different names. And uh, one day I had a friend who called me Dojo, you know, and, and why that really resonated with me is because, um, of course, you know, I'm into the martial arts. I love training jujitsu. You know, I've spent a lot of time on the mats and it's one of the things that I'm really passionate about as well. So that dojo aspect of the martial arts, you know, really kicks in and it's, you know, one of the things that I wouldn't say like defines me necessarily, but it's it's like an arm on Voltron, you know? It's like one of my pieces. And then uh, if we look at the word dojo and the meaning, <clears throat> It's not just martial arts. Uh, dojo was also a place where people can come together and share like a good spirit. You know, you could have called it a church if you're into those things. You could have called it a community center, a recreational center, you know, a place where you go and kind of uh, progress with like the good spirit, the good energy. Uh, everybody learns, everybody grows and for me, that was perfect because, like, that's what I'm all about, you know. I'm just all about coming together and just having fun and, and somewhere, some form, uh, just, you know, moving forward as a person, taking baby steps and encouragement, man. So when I heard Dojo, I was just like, you know what, let me just throw that on the front of Dean. I'm just going to run with Dojo Dean. You know, the shoes fit well. They're nice and shiny, so... I'm I'm running with it, man. Cool. So, what 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 got you into streaming? Like, uh, like, how did you go about deciding to foray, jump, you know, take the dive into the foray of like uh, the streaming experience? Like, what well, what was the moment, or I guess the 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 thing that pushed you to to get into this? Um, man, you know, I've always been into sharing what I do, you know, uh, whether it's on social media, even before I knew that content creation and streaming was a thing, you know, no matter what game I was playing, I was always taking screenshots, sharing it online, because, you know, I just thought like, if I can share this kind of stuff with people, maybe it will break them out and, you know, put them towards something that they like doing as well you know especially with video gaming because now video game is it's 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 on it's fire right now everybody does it you know but back then it wasn't the most popular thing to do you know so i wanted to kind of just be like hey i love video games too outside of all these other things that i'm into so it's okay to get hyped over you know your new dual blades or you know a new set of armor with plus 1 million HP and share it, you know, just really be who you are. And I want to see that stuff, you know, so it started first with just sharing what I was doing. And then time kind of passed. Um, I started to see the game streaming come around, you know, on YouTube. You know, I would watch them on my own time. Um, I watched a lot of this one a horror game streamer with my daughter is actually something that we picked up doing. So we would both watch this guy play scary games and, you know, get freaked out. And it was just something that brought me and Naomi together. And she just looked forward to it every single day, you know, like, Dad, are we going to watch this? The new <laughs> episode's out. So, man, I didn't play video games for, I think I went from 2000 and I'd say 14 all the way up to 2017 without playing any video games. Wow. And I was just, yeah, I was just doing a lot of work at the time and just kind of, you know, making some, some big movements in life. Mm -hmm. And one day I had a homie who was like, yo, I'm selling my PS4. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. He's like, do you want it? And man, I was like, yeah, I'll take that. You know, can you put me on like a little payment plan or something? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Times so, hard. <laughs> yeah. So he 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 let me buy his PlayStation from him. You know, shout out, homie Wu, love you. And 
it came with Resident Evil 7. Mm. And at that time, this was about, I'd say, the end of 2018. That's kind of when there's a little momentum on GOM with local streamers. So there's like a lot of friends posting like, hey, you know, come check out my Twitch channel. I went to go look at it, see what they were doing. I thought it was really cool. One night, I just logged into play. And I, man, I just, honestly, I just hit that start broadcast button. And, uh, you know, played Resident Evil. That was like one of the first games that I was able to stream. It was really cool. And I've just been doing it ever since then, having a lot of fun with it. So it's just that, uh, you know, just like I said, it's it's me wanting to share what I'm doing, uh, include other people in it, you know, and just hoping it might hype them up and, and get them into doing it as well. You know, that's really the energy behind me starting streaming is just creating that, you know, community, creating that place to go, place to chill and just have a good time. Okay. Wow, that's like a hella loaded answer. I'm I'm digging it though. I'm digging the vibe. Yeah, sorry. Hey, I, I, if if I hey. talk too much, man, you guys no, just no, no. play the yeah. music. You know, play the <laughs> award ceremony music on me because you know sometimes <laughs> I'm a chatterbox, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I can tell you're excited. I'm excited too. I I respect all the input that you got, man. I mean, like it it was like it was really like going on a journey with you. You know, explaining you know uh, stuff with uh. You, your daughter and you like finding mm -hmm. a streamer that you like it's like it's yeah. like paving the pathway right and that was like pretty sick um so so you know i did, one of the things that we really want to always ask our streamers is you know what like how is how is streaming so far for you and like you know what what do you like about it man streaming has been honestly really good it's really fun but the side that they don't tell you and the side that uh you don't get to really see is that for me at least it's a lot of work you know it's it's a i wouldn't say a chore because the chore sounds like oh, i gotta do the dishes and whatnot but you know there's there's some things you have to check off the list to stream you know you got to do the setups you got to do all the technical work you know you got to call the internet service provider up make asking why your you know internet ain't, ain't hot right now you know um you know uh, on the family side of things i have to make sure you know it's not cutting into like the quality time that i have with you know my loved ones so it's really good man i love streaming like i feel like i'll stream forever but at the same time too you have to put i have to put in that work you know i have to stay on the the p's and q's to make sure everything's running you know on the the work work side of things so you know so I, um you touched upon this a little bit um uh, how do you the difficulty and and making sure that you have set time aside for your family and loved ones and other priorities in your life how do you balance out uh a i guess quote unquote productive streaming schedule mm -hmm. as well as your personal and professional life um i guess the balance for me just lies in filling in the the the, the openings you know so um right just like right now you know with the uh, the pandemic going on and everything kind of being at a standstill um you know my daughter's here more so she has her schoolwork and i have to assist her with that so you know i'd have to schedule around like that whole school session mm -hmm. um for all the guys out there you know you're married folk you got a girlfriend you know, you can't stream with her watching on the couch, waiting for you to get done all the time. So, you know, it's just uh, like I'm being mindful of them. So, you know, like my streaming times, I stream probably, let's say, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Uh, on the weekdays. And that's kind of after, you know, we all get home from work. You know, we have dinner 
we we do something together we catch up on our days and you know it's that time where the, the maybe the lady goes to read her book before bed and for me reading the book before bed most of the time is streaming video games mm. you know and and having fun with the community and stuff and and winding down so and you know sometimes i have to 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 uh break things you know sometimes i if i have a schedule and if i know this is going on or if a surprise family dinner comes up um i have to you know just let people know like hey guys you know somebody came up won't be able to stream tonight but i'll see you guys next time because you know i gotta keep the uh i gotta keep my loved ones happy man <laughs> so, uh, just as a follow-up question what, what is your uh what is your streaming schedule like how often do you stream a week right now? um i try and stream at least four to five days at least so Monday through Thursday is either 8.30, 9 p.m. all the way until like, I'd say I stream till 11. Man, sometimes I get in trouble for this. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but I stream like past midnight, you know, wake up all groggy in the morning. Uh, Friday, it's the weekend. So I start my stream around like 9.30, 10 p.m. And like, we just play all night long, usually. Saturday is kind of like the same thing. And, you know, Sunday, I usually just kind of you know that's my uh, day to to relax and just hang out you know a lot of family stuff on sundays so yeah that'd be my stream that'd be my schedule right now nice uh and also i just want to uh piggyback off of that as well just like uh you know you did mention the word relax like what, what mm -hmm. is, uh on top of like streaming and you could also include this as well right like what mm -hmm. what do you what do you do to 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 relax what what do you what are the things that you find relaxing for yourself <clears throat> hmm. man i have a ton this might be two hours worth of <laughs> um man five it's or just something. i don't know <laughs> yeah exactly it's just you know anything like there's a lot of things that i'm into but i relax by doing things that kind of like have no pressure behind it you know like there's no pressure to like perform or no pressure to get something done so you know sometimes it's as simple as watching like an anime or watching like a movie with uh my daughter you know she loves just like i said she loves scary movies man it's kind of starting to scare me a little bit <laughs> but you know <laughs> So we're watching like, you know, Insidious and The Ring, like oh, 12 p.m., you know, in oh. the afternoon. And so it's just like a movie or, you know, uh, spending time with uh, Thea, going over our day. You know, there's a lot of family. There was, you know, a lot of family dinners, family barbecues and, you know, just things to kind of unplug and wine. You get to wear, you know, your Bahaki clothes, don't got to dress up and just man. chill, man. Insi you know, Insidious doesn't sound like a de-stressor type of activity. You know, it's it. You know, I'm a, it's uh, on the side. I remember one time. This was probably 10 a.m. Okay, so I had brought Naomi with me to the the dojo to teach a morning class, and I'm teaching, and all of a sudden from her iPad, I hear like all this like screaming and scary stuff. And I go over there to tell her to turn it down, and she's watching a horror movie at 10 a.m. You know, I'm like, hey, man, we got to go to church after this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, it's, yeah, she loves horror movies. So I, I think it's just being able to sit down with her and, and just relax. You know, I might be scared inside, but of course, I'm the dad, so I got to be tough. You know? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, it's cool, man. I just, you know, I just love it, man. So what do you, what do you, what niche do you think uh, your stream fills that separates you from other streamers out there? Is there, is there something that is, you feel is very unique about your stream that, that attracts the, you know, nearly 500 people that you have following? <clears throat> um, man, if I was to to uh, kind of put a spotlight on something. It would be my communication with people. Um, I don't miss a line, you know, I don't miss a line. Um, I don't put, you know, my game and performance in the game before, you know, viewers and, 
uh, you know, our conversations and stuff. And it's just that interaction, you know, that I really like the most. I always say, like, the video games and the game footage is kind of just the cherry on top. But the bulk of it for me and what I've seen for a lot of people that check out the channel is just the conversation, you know, like, I'm always into what people are telling me. You know, I, I got people that come in to talk about, like, you know, soccer, football from the area they're in or let me know about their day, let me know about how their school is going. You know, people talk about MMA, people come talk about jujitsu, you know, movies. So it's just that interaction and being able to, you know, conversate with people that I really enjoy, man. And I just get hyped off of hearing what people are doing. You know, I'm just a big fan of of people in general. So just them stopping by and just hollering at me and, you know, letting me know what's going on in their life. It's that's like the reward for me right there. So yeah. I would say it's just interaction, man. Just conversations. I love it, you know. Oh, and on the plus totally. side, I get to invite them to game. You know, I play a lot of multiplayer games. So I'm like, yo, you got this. Hop in. I'll invite you to chat. Let's, you know, let's play. Okay. Sweet. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of those things in streaming, right? Like, converse, like, interacting with chat is, uh, is I would like to say, very, uh, very important because it's also like an audience, right? It's also yes. like an audience. And, um, but then I'll, I'll, I'm not, at the same time, I'm just wondering, like, uh, has any, have you ever had those conversations where, you know, they ask where we were from? Because, you know, we come from Guam and, mm -hmm. uh, not many people, like, know about Guam. So, uh, how do you, how do you feel like, uh, how, how do, how do you have that conversation with them? Like, and you know, how, how, how important does it feel to actually, you know, make them aware that we're here on the map, you know? Yeah. You know, you know what I'll say about this question and one thing that I'm so stoked about and I'm just really proud about is that anytime anybody asks me where I'm from and I say Guam, I don't get to answer that question, you know? Because uh -huh. all my homies in the chat just start going off, just start describing Guam. They just start typing how beautiful of a place it is, talking about the food, the 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 camaraderie, you know, the, the island spirit. And it's like, man, I get to just add in a few things here and there. But I have to, um, you know, just really thank, like, the the people that tune in, you know, from Guam. because. Every single time I get that question, it's just chat gets flooded and spammed with so many good and positive things about the island that there's not one person who's ever asked about Guam who hasn't said that they want to visit there at the end of, of the conversation. You know what I mean? We even have like, you know, some, some co-friends who uh, has gone as far as learning the language a little bit. <laughs> oh damn. you know, you know so sick. like you know we really like put on in that sense and that's one thing that i'm just so like proud about is when people do ask that question and it's really cool i don't even get to answer it man it's it's all my friends you know that are in the the chat that start you know listing things and talking about guam and just kind of seeing how proud uh, everybody is to really be from a place like this it's uh you know I, I love it man that's another thing that really hypes me up too so so you know. I, on that note like I, I you know I know the stream is always or you know you try to make the channel very positive and so it's always yeah. like uh positive vibes and uh, mental mm -hmm. focus but how do you uh deal with like uh, negativity in the chat or in your stream do you ever get like any kind of bad feedback or or negative feedback uh from you know i guess new people who come to the channel whether it's the troll mm -hmm. or just you know not not enjoying the type of content and how do you uh approach that mm -hmm. and and continue to keep a positive outlook mm, yeah you know i have of course i've run into uh a few call it the whackness you know <laughs> people just coming in just being negative uh being whack but when i first see it um 
I try and attack it too, but I just try and attack it from a, a different point of view. You know, I'll laugh about it. Uh, sometimes I'll even joke around with them about what they're talking about too. You know, and, and on a couple occasions, I've had somebody come in just being really sour about things, and I joked with them about it, and they kind of just laughed later and just started talking like, you know, <laughs> a, a regular person, you know, mm -hmm. got to follow, and now they're part of the community too. So, you know, I have to to uh, be straight up about those things. If it just keeps going, you know, I won't. Um, what is it? I won't subscribe to it, and I'll just you know I got a few homies. Shout out to my mods, you know Matt Toast, for just dropping the the band hammer, you know when I need. But you know, just like I said, uh, the positivity, just that outlook has to reflect even in those times. You know, it's not always like sunshine and 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 rainbows coming out. You know. You're going to run into those things. You're going to run into, like, people hating. You're going to run into people coming through to troll, you know. But no matter what other people do, I don't believe it dictates my attitude towards them. So I'll take a minute to try and converse with them, try and see where they're coming from, laugh around, you know, be a little lighthearted. But, of course, there's rules. And if it keeps going, man, you know, you just got to give them the ban and that's it. I don't even remember the uh, the the names of people that I've banned, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we just keep it pushing, yeah. you know. S simple and clean, man. Simple hey, and simple clean. And... Simple and clean. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I respect, I respect. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts reference for people who don't know. Uh, but you know, it definitely sounds like you had a lot of you know ex interactions and experience uh, in in how you've been in in the amount of time you've been streaming. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I just want to go back, like, I, I, I just want to re revisit, like, you know, like, do you remember when, when was that first night? I know you said you bought like that PS4 mm -hmm. around like 2018, uh, like when, what, how long have you been streaming from that time? And, uh, if you can also add, like, what are some things you've learned from it? Like up to this point? I've been streaming, man. I don't remember the exact date. Uh, I have the worst memory, and right now, remembering one thing revolves around the anniversary for me and my lady, so that oh, already okay. filled the slide. You know, I, I don't, don't remember anything else after you, that. I just you good, you focus, good. I focus on that one day every day. You know, okay, this is when we met, this is when it started, but uh, as far as my first stream date, man, I don't know, but I did start, I'd say, December of 2018. Oh, okay. Yeah, December of 2018, I started off, I played uh, Resident Evil 7, <clears throat> yeah. and then my next game after that was actually a gift from one of my teammates at the time, uh, my friend Calvin Cho. He surprised me that next February on my birthday with Monster Hunter World, you know, wow. so that's how I got into Monster Hunter World. It was a gift from him, and, you know, to this day, I'm still very grateful for it, but... If there's anything I learned, I've learned it's, for the most part, it's the technical uh, side of things. Because before streaming, as far as, like, gaming and how to set things up, you know, I'm still rubbing sticks to make fire over here, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So even just all of that was something that I had to, honestly, I had to watch videos, you know, I had to watch videos videos i had to google it i had to learn about download uploads you know how to you know broadcast with the with a mic with a video right. camera you know and just like uh, grabbing the phone you know running the chat uh learning the the uh you know chat announcements alerts overlays you know those are things that i had to look up and and kind of teach myself. Um, I did have have a lot of help from, um, you know, Aldwin, AB. He's like one guy that I would constantly message, like, hey, what about this? How do I do this? And and he came through with, with a lot of help. So, you know, it's one of the reasons why, you know, I always play around and I call him Sensei because, you know, he just conveyed that information. But it's just that technical side of things. And on top of that, too, it sounds corny, man, but I watched a lot of videos and I read a lot of articles on 
just how to communicate, you know, how to how to capture the attention of viewers, how to stay away from having the dead, you know, dead air, mm -hmm. like no chat, how to play a game with nobody watching and kind of keep a conversation going. So when somebody does click in, you get that one viewer and they hear something, then they stick to it, you know, and just like everything, right? Like you can always learn something new and you could always get better at something. And I would say if you have the natural knack for streaming and video games, take a little bit of time daily to watch a video. You know, there's like a lot of videos, a lot of tutorials and how to's right now out there. So you can just watch, man, one or two videos a day, implement it and practice it. And, you know, that's what I do, man. To this day, I, I still do the, do those things. I'm always watching like how to's. <laughs> so I, I know so. you've given a you've given a couple hints here on um on on things that helped you build your streaming uh, mm -hmm. career. Uh, what are some like what what would be three rules or or tips that you would give to people who are just starting, you know, or, or who are just you know putting their feet into the water and and uh learning how to stream what are what are three things three tips that you would recommend to them to help kind of build uh their streaming portfolio okay um three things if i had to filter everything else out uh my first one would be that same excitement that you had before you started streaming about things like gaming and having fun you have to carry that into streaming, but then you also kind of have to carry it throughout the the next process as well when you're actually streaming. You know, I, I see a lot of people forget the fun part of things because now it becomes a way to gain viewers, you know, gain followers, gain a community, get a Twitch affiliate, Twitch partnerships. So you have these goals and sometimes well, not sometimes, a lot of times we might not reach those goals when we want to. So it does uh, demotivate people, you know, and I, I just want to tell people like, man, what video games did for you before streaming, like just keep that same, uh, you know, feeling, keep that same attitude towards it because it's that attitude of having fun and playing games. And if you're like a badass in Call of Duty or Apex, you know, and it carried you to that point where you started to broadcast, you know, just because you don't meet these little daily uh, goals, don't let that break that spirit because it's that energy that you had that's going to get you to where you want to go. So my first one would be, man, just always have fun. You know, video games are fun. It's entertainment. Have fun, you know. Um, my second one would be yeah this is kind of hard because i know there's like a lot of advice on doing this but you really have to have your goals set you know mm -hmm. like you have to really be honest about your goals and where you want to go with streaming you know if you want to just stream because you love it you know for the fun of it then i say you have to just stick to your stick to who you are you know stick to what you want to do play the games that you want to play, build the community that you want, and, you know, you'll be satisfied with it, right? But then, if you have big goals of becoming, like, a partner or, you know, like, an influencer, then you really have to approach it, I believe, with, like, a different mindset. You know, you, can't, you, you have to stay with the times. You got to know the current trends. You have to know the, the new, new. You know, you got to know the new game that's that's going to come out. You got to know how to switch to this game to build more viewers. You know, you got to know how to navigate and, and network, use Discord, you know, create a team, you know, stuff like that. So I would say the second one is just list your goals. Take some time and be honest about your goals and, and what you really want. And once you have those goals set down, just go for it. You know, whatever it is, if you want to stream every night with a small community and just have, 
you know, crap loads of fun, then stick to it, you know. But if you want to become, you know, big time and, and do your thing, then you're going to have to find ways to progress and build yourself for those goals also. So that's number two. <clears throat> um, let me see. Number three. Man, I feel like uh, number three kind of, you know, kind of mirrors number one. And I'm just going to use this for number three just because it's something that I've noticed a lot lately with people is, um, you know, I, I just want to say, like, it's okay to not uh, have a good stream in a sense. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. okay if you have, like, you know, one stream with, like, low viewers and maybe you might not meet your subscription goal. And and especially here on Guam, you know, a lot of us are just starting. So we're going to experience those things. You know, it's it's like we're like, what did they call it? Little fish in a big pond or something like that. And, you know, I man, I see a lot of people get really down on themselves. And to even go as far as referring to themselves as like failures, you know, or it, it makes them feel like, Maybe they're not uh, cool, you know, or nobody wants to mm -hmm. chill with them. And I, I just want to tell people, like, you know, it, it happens, man. It happens to me. Sometimes I, I stream, I got that big fat zero, <laughs> you know, <laughs> near my viewers for a little bit. And it's to be expected, you know, with everything that you do, it's to be expected. It's not always going to be popping. You know, you're yeah. just going to have to learn how to work through those times, how to navigate it, and just keep that good energy, man. If, you, Like I told somebody, if you have one viewer, you got to treat that one viewer like he's a million viewers, you know? Like, if you have that 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 attitude of, of gratitude, it sounds corny, but I'm going to use it, and just celebrate that, you know? You streamed on Twitch where there's like a million people watching other people, but you got like one viewer for that day, that's still somewhat of an accomplishment. You know, it's not a complete failure and that's just gonna set you up for the next one to come. Just find ways to progress and, you know, I think you'll be okay. But, you know, it just makes me, you know, it just worries me when I see people start to doubt themselves and talk lower themselves based off numbers. You know, so that's what I would say, man. Just keep your head up, you know, just keep your head up, find ways to progress. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to, to be bummed out about those things. But, you know, all of that ends the next time you hit that, that broadcast button. So, you know, just keep going for it, man. Just stay focused on your goals. Man, cool. inspirational stuff, dude, for real. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, guys. I, I know no, I'm talking no. a lot, man. Hey, man, I mean, we brought you on here because we want to get your thoughts, right? So, <laughs> dude, we really appreciate it. For those of you who are listening, hey, man, uh, if, you, if you're trying to get in streaming, like what Dojo Dean said, have fun with it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, have those goals set in mind if you, if you want to start building yourself up. But, you know, don't let it bring you down. Uh, don't, uh, there's always a, another broadcast time. And just yes. keep your head up. You know, keep your yes. head in the game. Just, and just enjoy the the vibes, right? Enjoy the yeah, vibes. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, for and sure. um, I know that uh, we we mentioned uh, uh, at the very beginning, right? That uh, you know, this podcast is by Laddie Esports, and uh, yes. we're we're all about uh, you know, developing esports on the island. Yes. So we just wanted to uh, know your thoughts on you know, how do you how do you view Guam uh in that type of uh how do i say this in that in in the future when it comes to esports like what your, what are your thoughts on like competitive gaming where would you like to see the island in in the future of esports man guam guam got a lot of skill guam has a lot of talent guam has like a lot of untapped talent and that's one thing that i've learned uh with gaming with you know, MMA, shout out, kid. you know, we got yep, yep. fighters from Guam and the PXC doing their thing right now. Guam has a lot of guild people. I say Guam was built on top of just one big maniple of skill and talent. And unfortunately, it's we're just way out here 
at a location that it's hard to move around. But I just feel like with anything, if you cultivate those things, if you build uh, lanes for people to progress and and to learn, we'll get it. You know, we'll have like those champions. We'll have you know those big streamers. You know, we'll have those you know, sports athletes that hit top tier, you know, Guam has a lot of it and it just takes a lot of groundwork. You know, that's why I started off the, uh, you know, little show with just giving you guys some praise, you know, and just letting you guys know that, man, it's really appreciated. A lot of people don't know the work that goes into pushing other people forward, you know, and especially now with the focus on, developing the younger you know age ranges of the island like that's where it starts you know when you have olympic gold medalists these kids started training when they were you know at a young age True. and to invest the resources into building people up especially with esports you know, I see it, man. I see it. Like, I believe it. In the future, you know, we'll have teams going out there and representing Guam in big tournaments. You know, we'll have players, you know, big names going out there and getting that spotlight. Because I feel like we already do. But it's just time to tap into that talent and help them with everything that they need to be able to get there. You know, so I, I believe there's a lot of fat Man, there's so many skilled video game players on Guam. It's crazy. You know, people that you wouldn't expect from like boys, girls, you know, adults. Yeah. There's a lot of good video game players here. I really look up to them a lot. And I just know with the right resources and with the right help, <clears throat> we'll get those champions, you know. I, I believe it, man. I have 100% uh, complete faith. I'm going all in that we'll have some champions in the future. For sure, man. Great. You know, um, like, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, how like Olympic athletes or medaled athletes, you know, they, they, they learn their craft at, at such a young age and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they have a facility and a program to, to kind of get them and, and, you know, mature, build them into a competitive athlete uh, yes. at a very young age. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with COVID-19 kind of, you know, redefining the type of world we live in, right? We like we we have no clue right now, like yeah, how how things will be oh, a boy. year from now or two oh, years yeah. from now, or yeah, if for if real. if normal will ever be what we once thought of it yeah. to be. You know, like this. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you think, uh, gaming has? Um, because personally, I believe gaming has like really uh, magnified its the the positive alternatives that it provides simply because like you know being able to play online or or, or using video game as an video games mm -hmm. as an outlet for a bunch of different like lessons is uh yes is pretty valuable right now you know yes. obviously gdoe yep. sees the value in that um other private mm -hmm. uh organizations both on guam and internationally obviously see the value on that um uh, what do you what do you think in terms of uh, the overall changes for esports, do you think it's like positive overall, or uh, you know, are we? Is it a negative type of thing? I think that it can have a positive outcome, right? Just like everything else. But I believe in the people that are behind everything and putting in the work. So I'm sure that at the end of this, you know, when we are able to get back around, get back moving. Things will be in place and things will be very strong for esports here on Guam. You know, uh, fortunately, like you said, we're able to do a lot of things online, you know, and set things up. Uh, you guys have had, you know, tournaments going. I've been able to watch a team from Guam play in a, a Valorant or Valorant tournament online, you know, even during this pandemic. Uh, with the League of Legends, the Valorant season going on, on right now. So I think <clears throat> it shows that the heart is still there. You know, it's still alive. Uh, it, just like everything else, you know, it's just time to adapt. 
you got to seek ways to get things done. Maybe, you know, you got to put a few things on the back burner, but it also brings time to just really brainstorm, you know, brainstorm, try a few things, you know, spend a lot, get a lot of thinking time, jot stuff down. So, you know, it's hard, man. It's hard and it's going to be difficult, you know, to, to really get back to where, you know, everyone wants to be after this is done. But I think with just making an effort to do what you can right now, I think that will be uh, the foundation for you know, when we're able to do everything. So I see it. I see it strong, man. I, I would take this as a plus. Cool. Yeah, I would take this as a plus. Nice. And then um, I, I think this will be like, at least at least for me, like, as a, I, I want to hear from you. One of my, my big questions is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, would you would you ever consider streaming as like a career if it was even possible, right? Would you consider mm -hmm. like actually picking up streaming as a full time job and career? And if if that's not for you, you know, like what well, give give us a reason why why not? You know. Yeah, I've been asked this question before. I thought it was a very good question, man. Thank you. Um, if I did have the opportunity to be like a big full-time streamer um you know it would be like a dream but i'm i'm living my dream right now you know like with the career that i have uh you know my involvement with dya and and working with kids you know monday through friday that's my dream you know that was my end goal in life you know so i reached that end goal so my streaming for me right now is to you know just supplement life a little bit you know do another thing on the side that i really enjoy that i'm really passionate about you know the revenue comes in i use that to either you know get new stuff for the stream or you know get some stuff for the the, the community kids and everything but you know i know that Becoming that full-time streamer, that full-time hitter, man, that's that's a lot of work. You know, for sure. For it sure. looks it looks really fun when we get to watch them, but I know that's a lot of work right there, and that's like sacrificing a lot of other things that, for me, I just wouldn't be able to sacrifice. You know what I mean? I don't know mm -hmm. if that makes sense, but that does. No, I hear yeah, you on that, uh, man. I hear yeah. you on that. Yeah, I really, you know, right now where I'm at, I really just love, you know, what, I, what I'm at, where I'm doing. And just like I said before, my goals for streaming, I was honest with myself. And, you know, this, I have what I want, you know, I've created something that I want, something that I really enjoy. You know, if it became something to where I'd have to, you know, put a little more pressure on myself, or I have to make the stream, I can't not go to the stream because of a family dinner, you know, th that's where it might uh, start to push me away a little bit, you know, because above all else, I really like my freedom too. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. for sure, man, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't like feeling like I have to do something that I, I don't want to at that time. So, you know, so kind that's of just me, man. To, to kind of wrap uh, this all up, I'm going to give you a moment to just like talk about anything you want to talk about, uh, about your stream, uh, you know, pitch anything. But uh, also, if uh, there are any local streamers that you really enjoy watching, I know you mentioned uh, Abjitsu, but maybe you mm -hmm. can list like three, three uh, streamers from the Marianas that you, uh, you'd like to see and why. Okay, man. Uh, yeah, we'll start off with Abjitsu. I really like that guy's stream. Uh, he's just a really cool dude. Uh, he's created like a great community, the Jet Squad. Man, big up to those guys. Uh, it's just a lot of really good energy uh, when you go in there. He gets a lot of people involved with the gaming, the community games. So, hey, man, I would say check out him for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, the homie Arc Pulse. You know, I would say same thing, man. He uh, runs variety streams, which I think is really cool because uh, there's not too many people that can run so many different categories of games, but still like keep that same interaction, that same energy with all of them. So I really like checking out his stream as well. So that's a big recommendation. 
Um, man, there's so many, man. There's there so is. many, there's but so many have, of us dude. here. <laughs> there's uh, man, Drea, you know what I mean? Doing her thing uh -huh. with like the League of Legends and stuff like that. You know, I always hop in there. That's a cool stream. Same thing, man. She's she's really cool at interacting with viewers and you know the laddie esports twitch channel yeah. i'm sorry i'm, I'm taking yeah. four man you know i'm taking we'll you, four right now give you the hundred dollars you know? under the table yeah man well, i'm gonna exercise <laughs> those those vp rights i'm making a list of four all right i'm not keeping that we're go. going for yeah. we're going with with the uh, laddie esports man and i tune into those i have so much fun you know i'm i'm not like an old dude but it's pretty interesting being in there with like a lot of the younger community and you know just seeing them have fun and play games and just tear it up. Like I said, man, I'm a big fan. So just shout out to Laddie Esports and you can Ken Sanity, everything that you're doing. Man, it's it's a beautiful thing, man. I love it. I love it. So yeah, the list goes on, guys. There's a lot of great streamers from the island. And I just say, you know, when the tide comes in, all the boats rise. Mm -hmm. You know, we I always say competitive nature within ourselves for those things is always healthy. But when it comes to just encouraging others and getting other local streamers on the scene, man, get involved, you know, share a tweet, you know, something as easy as like hitting the share button, you know, share somebody else's stream, you know, hop in another person's stream and, and chat a little bit, you know, because not only does it help them get to where they're going for their goals, but that interaction, that good energy that you bring is going to help you too. You know, so for all the local streamers out there, man, <clears throat> we're one big team. All right. So whatever you can do to help another person, help yourself by doing that too. All right. I don't know yeah, if that man. makes sense, but you know, it's I want to tell people that, man, help other people, you know, push other people forward too. Because when you push somebody else forward, you're taking those steps with them, right? Yeah, definitely. True, true. And I hear those yeah, good man. vibes, man. Much respect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, man. man. Much respect to you guys, dude. I'm sorry. This we, I think we went over the the time goal, man. But that's okay. It's the really first episode. It's the first episode, you know. So we can we can definitely uh, make it longer than, than the next few. Um, any closing yeah, remarks man. you want to give, uh, Dean? <clears throat> Dean, anything uh, you want to give in the remarks? closing? Yeah. Um, I I feel like I said a lot, man. Especially, yeah, you, did, uh, you, did. you know. <laughs> Yeah, the, in the, the times that we're going through right now, you know, everything is just going crazy. Let's just all keep it together. You know, like I say, stay healthy, stay helpful, always encourage the people around you with the COVID situation. You know, let's take care of ourselves, but we got to keep other people, uh, you know, in our thoughts too, right? And let's just, same same idea applies. Let's just all do what we can for each other we'll make it out the only way through is together Thank let's you. go man let's go guys guys if you want to catch Preach. dean's uh stream you can catch him at twitch.tv slash dojo dean um paul yes, anything sir, yeah. anything closing why don't you close us out here uh all i can say is a thanks dean for coming by yeah, um, you're welcome once again to shout out to him man Check out the Goodness Gang. If you goodness don't know the gang. Goodness Gang, hit him up with a follow at twitch.tv slash dojo dean. It was a pleasure having you. Such a great guy. You already felt the vibes. I hope you guys all felt the positive vibes through the, through the podcast. And we'll definitely be back for some more of those uh, hot streamers on Guam, especially with the yes. ones that Dojo Dean has even mentioned. We have some coming up, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, if you like the podcast, remember the podcast is brought to you by Guam Windward Memorial, one of the many sponsors of the Laddie Esports. Uh, remember Guam Windward Memorial, because in the real world, you may not get a second chance at life. So, And on that note, guys, we're going to close it out. Thank you so much. We will catch you on the next episode of the Casting Call. Hey.